Welcome dear students, today we shall discuss the second and final part of the Puranic tradition. Before going through this lecture in details, first let me explain its main objectives. To know about Puranic religion, to know about various sects of Puranic religion, to know about Puranic Shaivism, to know about metaphysical aspects of Shaivism and finally to know about the other varieties of Shaivism besides Puranic Shaivism. So let us move to Shaivism first. Shaivism is thought to be the world's and India's oldest and most ancient religion. Shaivism is admirable because it is still a vibrant religion that many people follow, not because it is the oldest. Shiva is regarded as the highest lord in this religion. Researchers strive to pinpoint Shaivism's pre-Vedic origin. According to Sir John Marshall, who studied the Mohanjadaro and Harappa sites. At Mohanjadaro, a male god appears side by side with this earth or mother goddess, who is recognizable at once as a precursor of the historic Shiva. He continues by saying that Shaivism is the oldest alive religion in the world and has a history dating back to Chalcolithic age. Scholars disagree on the topic of whether Shaivism is Vedic or non-Vedic religion. According to historians like Sir John Marshall, G. Pope, G. Slater and Maramalai Adigal, Shaivism is a pre-Aryan and pre-Vedic religion. Instead of Vedic heritage, they attempted to trace it back to the local Dravidian tradition. Scholars who support Shaivism's Vedic origin, including K. Nilkanta Shastri, hold a contrary view. Rudra, a minor deity, from the Vedic era is supposed to be related to Shiva. Rudra was an atmospheric god who was also exceedingly ferocious, destructive and physically alluring according to the Rig Veda. He is regarded as the god of animal sacrifices and is linked to the calamities of nature including storms, lightning and forest fires. The Yajurveda contains the evolution of Shiva and gives him 100 names. Ashupati, the animal god. Nilagriva, the blue naked bird and Sitikanta, the white throttled bird stand out among these names. Here Shiva is an omnipotence and omniscience are also mentioned. In addition, Shiva is referred to as Hara, Mahadeva, Isha, Ishana, Maheshwara and Bhagavata in the Shveteshvatar Upanishad. The words dweller in the mountains, lord of the mountains, the thousand-eyed and one who stands alone, steadfast are used to describe him. The epic of Mahabharata mentions Shiva by his 1008 different names and tells the legend of his marriage to Uma, the daughter of Himavan, the king of the Himalayan mountains. Shiva is linked to the beginning of Ganga in Ramayana. Bhagiratha caused the celestial Ganga to come down from the sky and Shiva caught her in his mated hair to tame her force and turbulence before letting her flow on the land. Shiva is referred to as Ardhanareshwar, a combination of masculine and feminine elements in Puranic literatures. He is also referred in Linga and Padma Puranas. Shiva is also portrayed as a truthful mentor and a peaceful yogi who meditates in silence. He is referred as Dakshina Murti while he is meditating and facing towards south. It has been suggested that origin of this form dates back to the prehistoric era from the Indus Valley civilization. Other names of Shiva include Mahayogin, Mahatpa, Yati, Taponitya and Yogvara. Numerous accounts about the destruction of evil people like Asuras can be found in the epics and Puranas. Shiva, also known as Samhara Murti, came to be recognized as the god of annihilation or destruction as a result. The Puranic literature makes mention of a number of different epithets for Shiva. Shiva can be identified by the Mahabharata's description of him as god wearing animal skin, deer or tiger skin having matted hair and a crescent on his head, carrying serpents, holding a trident or trishula and using a bull as his ensign. On his brow, 
the third eye of shiva represents wisdom the fire the axe and the drum are all shiva's arms he is supposed to have lived in the crematorium and his body is covered with ash the image of shiva as a dancing lord is also potent tamil literature makes frequent references to and elaborate descriptions of shiva the fact that shiva is mentioned in early sangam literature his evidence of how powerful and well liked he was in tamil country 64 holy sports that shiva undertook are well described in tamil religious literature the devotional literature makes frequent use of a variety of epithets forms deeds assets weapons embellishments incidents and metaphors to describe his persona and qualities as was already said shiva was well known during the indus valley civilization the identification of the vedic rudra with the native shiva led to a merger by the time of the shweteshwatara upanishad shiva had been fully assimilated into the vedic pantheon and had attained the honorary title of mahadeva megasthenes is the first foreigner to have specifically mentioned shiva shiva worship gained significant significance throughout the gupta dynasty shaivism's bhakti movement however can only be found in south india that rose to the tremendous heights now nature of god and soul in shaivism along with being good shiva also has a gloomy side to him from the idea of vedic rudra shiva's character is frequently depicted as being fiercey lurking in ominous locations like crematoriums wearing a skull garland and performing the rudra tandava which he uses to destroy the world at the conclusion of a kalp shiva is also regarded as a great ascetic who spends his days in constant concentration on the himalayan mountain side known as mount kailasha where the crescent moon is fixed and the holy river ganges flow his head is covered in matted hair it appears that shiva combines the traits of an agricultural and pastoral fertility god he is frequently referred to as pashupati the patron saint of animal and human reproduction he is frequently worshiped with his linga emblem according to shiva siddhant god is static immovable and unmeasurable by the confines of time and space in his fundamental nature he is above any practical knowledge he lacks a form and a name it is stated that god has the following eight fundamental attributes self reliance immaculate body natural understanding omniscience eternally free infinite grace infinite potency and infinite bliss are some of these god is referred to as para shivam in his purest form and para shakti is the name of his unbreakable energy god is beyond explanation because he is outside of language and its meaning despite the fact that god transcends everything he permeates everything all and resides within every living thing as their inner ruler god's limitless mercy causes him to take on a variety of names and forms for the sake of souls like the sun and its rays shiva and shakti are intertwined shiva represents the absolute static state where a shakti represents its dynamic state without shakti and without shiva there is neither theistically shakti the consort of the lord represents the grace of the lord through his shakti the lord performs the cosmic duties of creation protection destruction obscuration and the dispensing of grace these rituals serve the dual purpose of providing the souls everlasting bliss and all worldly and heavenly happiness the purpose of creating the world is to provide souls opportunities to interact with things and have experiences which will eventually exhaust the basic evil avana protection is used to allow spirits to reap the rewards of their past actions to give the souls rest after tasting the fruits destruction is carried out the soul is enchanted to earthly activities and enjoyment by obscureness through avana until its potency is fully depleted
द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अनावा इज द इंटेंडेड गोल ऑफ ऑब्सक्यूरेशन गॉड बेस्ट हाउस ग्रेस ऑन द सोल्स हु वॉच द अवना मेच्योर एंड ग्रो स्परिचुअली दे आर प्यूरिफाइड एंड गिवन इन सेट्स बाई द लॉर्ड हु कम्स एज अ गुरु द नंबर ऑफ सोल्स इज एंडलेस एंड दे हैव बीन इन कॉन्टैक्ट विथ अनावा मला सिंस द वेरी बिगनिंग by god's grace these souls were given birth the souls are separated into three groups called vijnana kalas pralaya kalas and sakalas depending on the strength of the malas vijnana kalas are the souls which possess only anava mala the souls with all the three malas the anava the karma and the maya or the sakalas when the soul is in contact with the physical body the organs of knowledge and action the objective world and objects of enjoyment it experiences worldly knowledge pleasure and pain it also passes through five different conditions which is jagra that means waking swapna meaning dream sushupti means dreamless turiya means deep sleep and turiya atita means beyond deep sleep the soul exhausts its karma through numerous lives and deaths and by the grace of god it achieves moksha or emancipation second only to god in importance glory and spirituality is the soul siddhanta is a proponent of the soul's potential it shares some characteristics with god although intelligent it lacks omniscience it possesses inner insight and will power it only understands god's grace it is able to know god because it possesses divinity this does not exist in matter it can elevate itself from being mala ridden to becoming a jeevan mukt with the grace of god if it has the will power to reject evil and pursue good numerous schools contest the soul's existence some systems believe certain objects to be the locus of the soul the nature of the soul is established by siddhantins who refute each of them the aim of creation is the value of soul promotion the soul is the cause of the deeds and the experiencer of their results in shiva siddhant it is evident from the examination of vaishnavism shaivism and shaktism that they cannot be viewed as unchanging homogeneous entities multiple religious streams were continuously changing and mixing resulting in synthesis but not fully integration the puranic tradition is a good example of how religions have changed over time particularly when they went from being exclusive to being much more inclusive now bondage and liberation pashu literally translates the one who is bound the bond is pasha imperfections or faults they go by the names anava karma and maya anava is a fundamental human flaw the national dirt affects it to man is the spiritual darkness only to counteract the negative effects of spiritual darkness are maya and karma use it anava masks the consciousness of the separate self even as the vadigirs hides the dazzling shine of a copper plate avana's nature is to stop the soul from being active the relationship between anava and the soul is unbreakable it predates even the creation of the individual self maya is a second bondage it is the actual origin of the material elements the universe is primary cause the foundation of everything the genuine and eternal cause is maya maya has a delicate undetectable formless and perceivable nature resolution and evolution are part of maya maya is in a subtle state the transformation of maya into visible forms gave rise to the tatvas they change according to god's will in order to save souls god's intervention is the reason the third bondage is karma it takes the shape of dharma and adharma or merits and flaws shaiva siddhanta emphasizes that the path of chariyai and kriyai which involve service and worship are paths that lead to liberation it is emphasized that service is the most effective way to obtain god's grace the other methods are yoga and gyana through consistent practice of the sadhanas the soul achieves a state of balance and outlook iru vinay po where it is neither irritated nor elated in times of adversity or prosperity when the soul reaches a state known as mala paripagam it has exhausted its anava and karma 
by its participation with the universe through various actions. The Lord himself takes the shape of a guru on the path to perfection, serving as a teacher and illuminating the nature of reality. The soul receives God's grace or anugraha, shakti. The soul is liberated from the bondage and achieves happy nature, emancipation or mukti as a result of God's illumination. Dear students, now let's discuss the other prominent schools of Shaivism than Puranic Shaivism. Some are the prominent philosophical schools of Shaivism. First, the Pashupata or Kapalikas. The oldest Shaivite tradition in the North India is the Pashupatas. They exhibited strong austere tendencies. Although they distance themselves from these traditions and emphasize their Shaiva monotheism, their theories express similarities to those of Sankhya and Yoga philosophy. Shiva is the world's primary cause and completely independent in their eyes. The roots of nature and souls can be found in God's will. The souls who have attained liberation are forever linked to Shiva. In seclusion, they maintain a constant meditation connection with Shiva as part of their yogic practice. They commonly visit cemeteries for this purpose. Their ritualistic rituals were frequently thought to be repulsive. Kapalika, a more extreme sect, held a showy indifference to anything of the world. They sincerely believe that it is the finest way to escape samsara. They carried Kapala, a human skull, and a dish of alcohol. They are revered as the frightful one, Bhairava, or the sickle bearer Kapalika, as a result of this. Now, the second school is Kashmir Shaivism. Around Kashmir, a monastic variation of Shaivism emerged in the 9th century, which is popularly called Trik Shaivism or simply a Trika by its name. Trik Shaivism is the name of the sect. Siddhant Tantra, Maliniya Tantra, and Vamak Tantra are the fundamental texts of the Trika. These works have a revelatory quality and contain certain theological ideas rather than philosophical ones. Vasugupta Shiva Sutra contains the earliest comprehensive explanation of Trika philosophy. Later Shaivite philosophers like Somananda, Utpaladeva, Bhaskara Acharya, Abhinava Gupta and Shema Raja improved it. In Kashmiri Shaivism, the absolute is vivid in relation to the three concepts of God, soul and matter. Kashmiri Shaivism, which is influenced by Advaita, holds that Shiva is the absolute reality from which everything else has arisen. From a theological, theistic perspective, Shiva and Shakti are both aspects of the absolute for Trika. The absolute includes both God and Godhead. Even though there is only one reality, it can be viewed from two different angles. Abhinava Gupta provided a non-dualistic and theistic philosophy by combining the Shaiva and Shakta components of the Trika. The only reality transcendent and outside of thought, intellect and speech is the non-dual absolute. Shiva is the absolute in its static form and unadulterated consciousness. Though dynamic aspect, absolute manifests itself as the universe as Shakti. Since Maya and Avidya are seen to be the products of divine energy, that Shakti, the manifest cosmos is not the outcome of either. The phenomenal manifestation is real since the absolute is what gives the universe its appearance. It is not an illusion. Therefore, from the perspective of the absolute, the world is identical to the absolute. While manifesting as a universe, absolute does not go any kind of division, transformation or change. By reflecting the absolute self-consciousness within it, similar to how reflection in a manner cause manifestation. God looks to be a finite and restricted cosmos and person. The Kashmiri school of Shaivism makes an effort to elevate matters above the Advaita school of Monism. It categorically rejects the pessimist outlook of worldly life with strong roots in Tantricism. It affirms the worlds rather than advocating resignation of it. The act of God obscuring his true nature is known as bondage. The knowledge of the Lord's basic nature is nothing without liberation. It emphasizes how crucial information is to emancipation. The intellectual insight that the absolute and personal identities 
are one and the same is liberation. The pursuit of liberation is possible by taking pleasure in everyday existence. In Trikshaivism, several paths to salvation are suggested while taking into account the personality and mental capacity of the individual. In this Shaivism, Bhakti is also an option. It disproves the yogic idea that achieving liberation requires effort. Self-effort is just as important to liberation as divine grace, karp, anugraha and prasada. No type of self-effort will be successful according to the school until grace is extended. For the realization that one is identical with the absolute, one needs and has access to the grace of Shiva. Grace is a free gift from God that is neither a result of or reliant on a person's good behavior. It is an unasked gift that God is giving freely and without any hidden agenda. Grace and personal self-surrender are complementary, one strengthening and deepening the other. The another is Shaiva Siddhanta. The Tamil Shaivites produced the Shaiva Siddhanta philosophy system, which is based on the Shaiva Agamas, Upanishad, 12 Tirumurais and 14 Mekant Shastras. Siddhanta literally translated as a settled conclusion. All people who worshipped Lord Shiva are said to adhere to the Shiva Siddhanta, which is said to be their definite philosophy. In South India, this intellectual framework has enjoyed enormous popularity. The culmination of the Agama is Shaiva Siddhanta, also known as Agamantra. It never rejects the Vedic tradition while being the result of the Agamic tradition. The Vedas are regarded as the authoritative source. The unique source for this system is the Agama. A theistic philosophy that combines philosophy and religion is known as Shaiva Siddhanta. It admits three everlasting realities because it is a pluralistic realist. It aims to establish a relationship between God, matter and the soul, much like any other philosophical philosophy. It asserted that, like God, matter and soul were eternal. Through its grace from the absolute, is continuously working to free souls from the shackles of matter and the three stains, malas, that taint their purity. The universe and the soul are not the same as God. He does not make things up, rather he lives within them and they within him. Advaita emphasizes inseparability over unity. Shiva is the one source of all enlightenment and the lone manifestation of knowledge and elegance. But the guru or the teacher is the one who sheds the light of enlightenment. Now the next is Veer Shaivism. In the northwestern regions of Karnataka, Veer Shaivism or Lingayatism as a Shaivite religious movement acquired popularity at the beginning of 12th century. The 28 Shaiva Agamas also served as the foundation for the Lingayata cult. According to tradition, it was established by five ascetics Ikorama, Panditaradya, Revana, Marula and Vishwaradya, who were thought to have sprung from the head of Shiva. Shri Basaveshwara was thought to be the originator nevertheless. He rebelled vehemently against pointless rituals and orthodox Hinduism by refusing to participate in the sacred head ceremony. His devotees considered him to be an embodiment of Nandi. According to this tradition, Shiva is the sole deity that deserves to be worshipped. Being such sitot Shaivas is where the word Veera Shiva originates. The Lingayatas can be identified by the small Linga they wear around their neck, which is encastered in a metal box. Theoretically, they abolish all caste divisions and accord women the same status as men. They are devout vegetarians who reject all sorts of sorcery and magic. For the Lingayatas, the Linga is not always a phallic symbol, rather it is seen as a concentration of fire and light that purifies the person's body and mind. Because the Lingayatas believe fire to be so pure that it should not be used for cremation, they choose to bury their dead rather than burn them. Every person possesses the inner Shiva strength that enables them to see all things as divine manifestation. Dear students, it was all about today's lecture regarding the second part of the Puranic tradition. Hope you have enjoyed the lecture. We shall meet again with a new topic 
till then take care and goodbye